every one of those, the people, the practitioners there that are doing home staging or helping people work out because their gym or, or providing some kind of care, they're all certified, aren't they? They all had to go through some kind of training, get some kind of license, didn't they? Right? So why wouldn't there be a license in digital marketing? Welcome back, everybody, to the Better Than Rich show. Today on the show, you are all in for a treat. We have Dennis Yu on the show. I can honestly say this was one of the most interesting conversations that I've had on the show in a long time. We talk about SEO, AI, how that's changing the game of SEO. Uh, his whole question is, are you Googleable? And uh, if you're not sure if you're Googleable, go ahead and Google yourself right now and see. And then go ahead and Google Dennis Yu and see what pops up. He's somebody who is the premier authority uh, on this topic. I also really enjoyed this conversation because he's super down to earth, even though he really knows his stuff. Uh, it was also really funny because towards the end, a little surprise occurred. We got actually guest bombed for the first time on the show. So uh, make sure you stick around to the end and, to find out what that's all about. But Dennis was one of the original uh, search engine engineers at, at Yahoo. And now he spends his time teaching people how to become Googleable. He spent over a billion dollars with different companies uh, to learn this practice and this trade and how to actually get results. He talks about his dollar a day strategy, which is the world famous strategy at this point. So you're going to enjoy this this uh, this episode. Dennis is a great guy. Make sure you check him out, and let's get on with the show. Welcome to the Better Than Rich Show with your hosts, Andrew Biggs and Mike Abramowitz. The Better Than Rich Show helps ambitious leaders who are on a mission to leave the world better than they found it, change their perspective on what's important, increase their income and impact, and systemize their life and business. If you've ever struggled with finding your purpose, have felt disconnected or distracted, or found yourself going through the motions, this show will remind you that what you do matters and will re-inspire you to chase your highest dreams. It's time for you to become better than rich. Welcome back, everybody, to the Better Than Rich show. I'm your host today, Andrew Biggs, and I'm here with my special guest, Dennis Yu. Dennis, how are you today? Good, Andrew. Good to see you from D.C. today. D.C.? Okay, very nice. Uh, what are you doing there? I was the closing keynote talking about SEO and AI as a search engine engineer, and then I'm flying to Vegas tonight and San Francisco on Monday and New York on Tuesday and Dallas on Wednesday. Wow. That's amazing. It's all keynote speaking. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's amazing. Well, we'll maybe we'll have a chance to get into that. I, but I, I know we have a cover. Um, yep. So, hey, I would love to talk about this. You know, everyone just got done kind of hearing your bio about being one of the original search engine engineers. And I'm just mm -hmm. thinking, man, what, what would have that have been like? And then obviously I want to get into what you're doing today. Um, but yeah. just take us back to that, you know, initially. What was it like kind of being one of those early uh, early people into this industry um, and building this industry from the ground up? Well, today we know the internet's a big deal and it's easy to sugarcoat what happened in the beginning when you look back. But 35 years ago, I built my first website and none of us really thought the internet was going to be anything. And because I had a background in data and statistics and working with large files, Yahoo needed someone to be a data miner search engine engineer, work on these huge log files. So whenever people visit your website, it generates these files, these log files of where you came from and what you clicked on and what you did. And I had to put all those log files into a central database and try to analyze what people were doing, which sounds really easy if you had Microsoft Excel or something like that. But the files were so big, Andrew, that if I gave one of them to you, you couldn't even open it it's that big. And we had data that was larger than any commercial database at the time could handle. So we had to build our own operating system to be able to do that. We had to create our own query language. We had to build on top of the free BSD kernel, one of the operating systems out there that was open source because of the things we had to do with processing data. So today it sounds easy that you could just take all of these files of what people are clicking on and what they're searching and then like opening their Yahoo mail or looking at Yahoo sports or 
having a Yahoo dating profile and say, oh, it's really easy. How many times do they log in? How many profiles did they make? How much money do they pay? That's kind of easy to do today. But 20 plus years ago, it was a lot harder. And it was pretty ugly. Like you would think, a lot of people think like the beginning of any major corporation was like people in an office and they're all professional and having meetings. And it was the most ragtag experience. We were in the office till past midnight most days. And David Fowler, who's the richest man in the world under 40 at the time, his code, if you looked at it, was all his variables were all swear words. And I mean, we, we did stuff that would get you fired today. You know, <laughs> if anyone saw the things we did, it would, you know, I don't think people would like that, but that's, you know, that's how it was back then. So I don't mm-hmm. talk about that too much because I think I might get canceled if anyone were to find out, you know. I bet you have stories. Yeah. Next, next time we're in. I can tell you stuff. I'll meet in person. Yeah. Don't cancel me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. This is not a cancellation type of show, man. We're, we're, we're we're free thinkers. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, we got, we got stuff done. It was ugly. Okay. That's, that's basically. (laughs) Yeah, that's good. Uh, Well, I mean, I imagine that it's interesting because obviously now you teach people how to make sure that they're Googleable, right? And you Mm -hmm. teach SEO to people and what better person to teach SEO, right? Than somebody who actually was there at the ground level. Um, You know, talk, talk to me a little bit about SEO, particularly, I know you focus a lot with, with local service businesses. We have a number of local service businesses like um, that we, that we coach. So we have like a home staging company, right? Uh, We have a mental health clinic. We have, you know, a home care service provider for the elderly. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, these are like, you know, uh, we have a gym. Like, and okay. they're always, their number one struggle, right, for most of them is leads, right? How do we get more leads? How do we get more leads? Of course. They're, small businesses, of course. they're great, high-quality products and, and services that they provide, but it's just leads, leads, leads. So, hey, man, you're the man to, to mine information from. So give me the good so I can help them better. What would you say? Let me counter the biggest mistake and misunderstanding when it comes to SEO. And if you don't understand this one thing, nothing else matters. To show up on Google when someone's looking for a home care company in Denver or looking for a gym in Denver, Colorado, or looking for you know a mechanic in Seattle, Washington, you're looking for someone who provides a service in a particular area, okay? You're not trying to rank for like broken transmission across the United States, nor are you trying to rank on everything inside Colorado Springs, right? You have a particular thing that you do in the city that you do it, that there's, and everyone, you can think of this giant tic-tac-toe, right? There's all the things, headings that, that can be, you know, the things that you would search for, broken car, you know, mental health, psychiatrist, right? The things that people are searching for, and there's all the cities. And every business, unless you're a chain, sits at the intersection of one of these crosses. That makes sense, right? Yes. So you need to win in that little box. And me having the unique perspective of being at the search engine, my job was to protect the search results from all the people that were trying to trick us. So all the agencies, all these SEO people are trying to trick us because they want to make the phone ring for their client, of course, right? But the things they would do has polluted the understanding of digital marketing so that that local service business owner could be a, you know, a family practice attorney where they deal with divorces. They think, well, I need to hire this SEO expert because I don't understand SEO. Meanwhile, I'm an expert at law and I wouldn't expect them to understand law. So I do my thing and they do their thing. That's the common lie that's been told, right? Mm -hmm. Here's my response to that. You cannot Mm -hmm. do SEO. As a search engine engineer, I've never lost this argument. You cannot do SEO. We'll say, well, Dennis doesn't know what he's talking about. He's not an SEO. That's right. I'm not an SEO. My job has been working at the search engines, protecting the results so they're still good when all these other people are trying to pollute the stuff to get their client to be number one, right? So what do we look for as a search engine? This is what you need to understand. We need evidence, proof, that you do the thing that you say that you do. So you have a home, an in-home healthcare business, you know, visiting angels, whatever, let's say in Austin, Texas, I'll make that up, right? And you've got caregivers 
that go around to people's houses and help grandma with her pills and help her, you know, around the house and make food and all these sorts of things that a caregiver does. And if let's just say you're a home home health care business, it's called a service area business where you you go to them like a plumber, whatever, you know, they don't come to you, you go to their house, right? In Austin, Texas, if you are good at what you do in the city that you do it, there are signals that the lie detector is looking for, such as what kind of reviews are coming in. Is there traffic to your website? Are people engaging with you in other ways? Are they on Facebook? They're not looking for how many followers you have. They as in Google and Facebook and the networks that are kind of analyzing your presence. They're not looking at, you know, whether the website is built on WordPress and what kind of plugins that you're using. They're not looking at what kind of backlinks you have necessarily or you're paying for PR. They're not, they can see past that. I could see through that. I'm trying to see past that to see, are you actually good at the thing that you do? If so, you're going to rank better in the maps because me as a search engine, I'm going to show you in the maps, in the regular results, in the ads, in the local service ads, on YouTube, on social media, and people also ask, in a knowledge panel, in forms and discussions, in video. There's all these different places you can show up, right? So me as a search engine, I want to show the best result. So if you are a local service business and you're a roofer and you do a really good job doing roofing in Atlanta, then there should be evidence of that. So the, the mistake is thinking, well, I'm going to hire this SEO agency. Yeah, but if they don't know anything about roofing, and if they're not in Atlanta, how are they going to increase the signal that Judge Google is looking for, right? Oh, but we're SEO experts. Yeah, but you don't know anything about roofing. So how are you going to create content that's going to appeal to people who have a leaking roof or commercial versus residential roofing or the different sorts of, you know, a hurricane comes through and, and rips up all the homes. Do you know how to work with the insurance people to get your roof repaired and filing claims? Like you need to tell those stories. So Google released this thing two years ago called EEAT. They updated their 170 page quality rated guidelines document. The thing they update every year and they added an E to it for experience. So it's EEAT. It sounds kind of technical, but the main thing is experience. It's this simple. Do you have provable, clear experience doing the thing that you do? You have technicians that are fixing broken transmissions. Great. You have caregivers that are going around and helping grandma with their pills, whatever it is, like people, your people doing the thing that they're doing, vertical cell phone video, not fancy ad, $60,000 movie camera kind of stuff, not fancy production, not, you know, Valpac, not billboards and like nothing wrong with that. But I need to see proof that you do the thing that you say that you do. It's that simple. That's there. And I see it and just corroborating itself on social media and on YouTube and on your website. You know, people are coming to your website. You know, that data leak that came out last month where all these SEO people like arguing about the 14,000 variables and what Google leaked. You saw that, right? It was Actually, a big, big hump up. No. no, I thought you were talking about something else. No, I didn't see it. All right. then, was so it? there's this big data leak. And okay. it basically came out that there's a, there's an API that Google internally uses to yeah, I'll just summarize it. So they're using your actual data, your actual Chrome. What a surprise. They're using your yeah. the, the click data of users on Chrome. They're, they're using the Google Analytics data. We've known this for 20-something years. Why is this now a surprise, right? And all these SEO people are now running a, you know, with their heads cut off because they thought that it was like, well, I, I have all these like ways of buying links and ways of trying to trick Google and and I've, from the very beginning, said, why don't you actually show that you do the thing so you don't, instead of trying to lie, instead of trying to pass the lie detector test by tricking the system, why don't you actually work with clients who do a good job? If you get, if you have 2.8 stars and you're an Italian restaurant and you, and people aren't coming to your Italian restaurant, you should probably fix the problem with your 2.8 stars, you know? Mm -hmm. You, you yeah. need to have the, the signal. It, so I love working with people who they're, doing really good work and there's lots of yeah. evidence of that and then the seo is automatic we get all these people ranking my friend ken vandaging he has a pest control business in portland and him and his wife linda have been doing it forever and they do really good work and they train their people they're family run christian business i mean this whole like everything they just and you can see they do really good work they don't overcharge all this kind of stuff and they rank number one in portland pest control is it because we're really good at seo or is it because we're feeding the system what it wants? Mm, what a surprise. 
Yeah. I, I now, love of course, that, we man. have to enable that. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I want to talk about that. We have to uh, enable but, the collection of that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the crosshairs ahead. idea, right? It's just, okay, hey, everyone has a, a service, right? You have a city. Boom. We have to nail that. You don't need to focus on trying to rank yeah. for, you know, every, every uh, question someone might ask about your service or, or try to um, do something like that. And then, yeah, I mean, uh, reviews, uh, traffic. I'm just looking at my notes here. Uh, you know, just just the videos and, and the things you mentioned, uh, kind of this this shorthand sort of experience. Um, yeah, okay. I'm a local service business. You're telling me not to go hire an SEO expert, but then, you know, I, I got shit to do, Dennis, to be honest. Like, I got other things do. to do. So how do I prioritize this so that it doesn't fall to the wayside? And, and if you were to give like, just, you know, the, the easiest way to, um, because I know I have a great service to show that online, um, uh, that's also, you know, something I can do quickly, uh, and not going to take too much time. What would you say? Or is the answer, Hey, this isn't going to be a quick fix. I, I don't know. What would you say? Neither of those is correct. What you do, and it's not even a prioritization thing. So right now, Andrew, you and I are talking, but are you prioritizing your breathing or are you just breathing? I mean, certainly you want to focus on conversation, but you need to be breathing too, right? So are you not prioritizing breathing? Yeah. Are you not prioritizing doing good work? No, it's not a, it's not a priority question. Here's what has to happen. There are people that are interacting with your customers, your team members. Maybe you have a customer care center, people that are answering the phone, Maybe people come into your facility because you do physical therapy. There's a front desk. There's people that are talking to your customers, right? In every one of our local service businesses, someone is rendering the work, fixing the car, bringing grandma her pills. Those people need to kind of along the way be capturing those little moments, little photos, little 15 second videos, little bits like that, and then uploading them to a shared Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever your central folder is. And if that's being done, then you can hire a young adult, maybe your son, maybe someone from the high school, maybe someone from the Philippines. You know something about VAs. You and I both have hundreds of VAs, right? John Jonas is about 2 million VAs. A lot of my friends have hired hundreds of VAs using our systems. There's no magic, as you know, in hiring VAs. I mean, I just had, uh, what's his face on my podcast? He's got thousands of VAs. I've hired, you know, I've been with all these folks, you know, Chris Drucker, all of them, right? On hiring VAs. But then it's not the, the magic of the VA. It's that you have a clear functional process that you hire someone into. You hire them into the function of processing that content. So when you process the content into blog posts, into social media snippets, run ads, local service ads, these kinds of things, from the core raw, we do the thing we say we do and it's captured in a central folder then it's an internal process issue. The real issue is the process, not the people, not a priority, not a fancy tool. Oh, what about this one tool that asks for recommendations? Yeah, I'm sure that's good too. What about this AI tool that chops up video and does, yeah, that's great too. I know lots of these tools, but it's the process. It's not the tool. When the process is there, then someone who's like partway trained in the Philippines, or maybe you have a young daughter or whatever it is, can, can do this stuff. So my friend, Jeremy Newman, He's got a $14 million a year restoration company. So when there's flood and mold and fire, he sends his crews out and they fix stuff, right? He's in San Antonio. He's got a plumbing business because plumbers and restoration companies kind of go hand in hand. And he he's grown so much. And because of some personal issues, he, he can't operate day to day in the business anymore. So he brought in his two sons to run the business just a couple of weeks ago. And his daughter graduated from college three weeks ago. And now his daughter is going through the very thing that we're talking about here. We have all this stuff published. As you know, you Google me and see all of it. Put it out there. His daughter is now running the marketing. And it's a family-run business. And what better person than the daughter who understands Jeremy Newman's restoration, crown restoration in San Antonio? Go Google it and see. You can criticize her work, right? And it's working so well because they've brought it in-house. I'm not saying don't hire agencies. I'm not saying, I am saying don't hire SEO people because I consider that a scam. They don't mm. think they're scams, but just because they don't think they're a scam doesn't mean they're not a scam, right? 
I won't, unless you want to go into it, I won't, won't explain like why it's a scam. It's a scam because it can't be done. As a search engine engineer, I'm telling you, it's not possible to do this, you know, but you've got to own the function. The function has to be owned in house and then you can staff it with a virtual assistant. So it's not a priority issue. If it was a priority, priority, Andrew assumes that it's something you or I have to do. I don't want anything to be on my plate. My plate's already full. I, there's nothing, I don't want it. to say priority implies that there's another thing to be added to my plate. I have to now decide. I don't have time for that. I don't have any more time. But what I do want to do is make sure the work's getting done. So I need to assign it to someone that way they can be working on it. And there's no priority issue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like what you said, just capturing these little moments, these little exchanges and interactions. Um, and, and then it just becomes, yes, what's the process and how, who's going to execute it. Right. Um, it's not really a secret. Yeah. I'm getting on an airplane in an hour from now. And it's, I think it's, it's Boeing 737 max, which I think should be fine. But the pilot, do you think the pilot went to a secret flight training school where he learned the secrets of flying a 737? Or do you think that that stuff's all published and it's all detailed and there's training and certification and all that, right? Yeah. Look, Andrew, of all the businesses that you work with, you mentioned, right, home health care and mental health and home other things. So, company, yeah, gym. State, yeah, but gyms. But those, every one of those, the people, the practitioners there, that are doing home staging or helping people work out to their gym or, or providing some kind of care. They're all certified, aren't they? They all had to go through some kind of training, get some kind of license, didn't they? Right? So why wouldn't there be a license in digital marketing? We've put together the certified license trainings with TikTok, with Fiverr, with mm. the online jobs.ph, with all the other major, you know, HubSpot, with, like Google it. Type in HubSpot dollar a day. You'll see there's a certification in there. So when there's no certification, it leads to snake oil and witchcraft and abracadabra. There's oh, a clear that, standard man. here. There's no secret. Why do people keep asking about what the secret is? Are you kidding? Uh, I'm playing golf this evening with my pilot friend. Am I going to ask him, like, what's the secret to flying the, I think he flies a seven. 727, I don't know what kind of airplane he flies, but there's no secret to the, to the airplane he flies. He went to flight training school for this thing. Mm-hmm. Well, amazing, man. Tell, tell us about the dollar a day strategy. Obviously, that you know, your bread and butter, and, and uh, there's a lot to it. But yeah, what's, what's the dollar a day strategy for paid? So, in a nutshell, it's a testing strategy. So, what we're doing is we're putting out lots of things that are working well so proof that you are doing the thing that you say that you do and if the engagement is high if it ranks in search if somehow it performs if it makes the phone ring then we put more money on it and so what we do is we test for a dollar for seven days so for any piece of content on facebook on linkedin on youtube we put seven dollars against it because we let it run for a week and usually about one out of every 10 will be what we call the winner because it passes a basic threshold 10% 10% engagement, that kind of thing. And then we put more money. We put $10 a day, $20 a day. Sometimes we spent a million dollars a day. Like for Rosetta Stone, you know, the language company? We spent a million dollars a day. But we didn't just say, you know what? Dennis is the expert. Or my friend Eric Ludwig, who is the CMO. Like, oh, Dennis and Eric are the experts. So, you know, of all these kinds of ads or these kinds of campaigns, I think this is the one that's better. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah because it's the big boss. You wouldn't want to disagree with the big boss. No, I would never want that kind of pressure. Would you ever want that, Andrew? You're in a conference room and you're in charge of driving sales for Black Friday and there's this whole campaign going on? No, what we did was let's run a bunch of little things for a few dollars a day. And the one that did the best, you know, we narrowed it down to the four or five that did the best then put like $100 a day and let those compete against each other. You know, it's like the NCAA or Olympics. Like they all compete in a bracket and we have a winner at the end. So the winner we did a million dollars a day against and it crushed it and the ceo Stephen steven schwab at the time he congratulated me and the cmo and said dang you guys are like absolute geniuses in marketing and drove, drove off the sales and all this and eric turned turned to me and said this this guy dennis is actually a genius i said no it wasn't me it was the, this whole team of people that went out and collected stories of all the people that were learning how to speak spanish 
there was this one paramedic in Portland, Oregon, and he learned to speak Spanish. And then when he gets on the scene of an accident, he can ask in Spanish, so do you have any like allergies or like you can't take certain medication or whatever? And that has saved lives because if he didn't speak Spanish and it's a Spanish speaking, you know, victim or whatever, you got to wait for the translator to come. And by then they could have died of the heart attack or, you know, whatever it was. Right. And we, we, that, that was the one that was the winner, that story. But was it because I was some kind of genius? Because in hindsight, I could say, yeah, it was such a good story. And, you know, of course, it, it was very moving. And of course, it was better than the businessman who took his wife to Paris and ordered in French, uh, you know, on the menu and impressed the wife that he could order in French because it was a dream of them to have a view of the Champs Elysees and the Eiffel mm -hmm. Tower and walk around Paris and all this. And they were speaking and ordering in French. And how cool was that? Like, you know, I, I could have, I thought maybe that was going to win, but it did the worst. But the thing is we had lots of these things and we tested for a dollar a day. It wasn't because we, we had fancy ads. It wasn't because we were clever at copywriting. It wasn't because the AI wrote all these things for us. It's because we collected real stories, raw and authentic with people who say, I'm in awe, whose hair is not done right. We collected real stories, tested a whole bunch of them. The one that did better, we put more money on. That's the dollar a day strategy. How do you argue that? Yeah. I love put the it. billion dollars doing this. It's <laughs> testing. How do you argue with the math? You can argue all day long that two times three is 28 and it's not. It's not, it's not everything. The, the way I look at it with this online marketing, I don't know why people are so confused to this day. It's freaking math. Why do people still not understand how this thing works? Hmm. They still want to hear know. the secret. I, I've been saying the same it. thing for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I know that you're right. And I, I guess in some ways, um, you know, putting like making sure that as a small business, you're able to do what the big boys do in the testing and like, you know, pulling all these no, things. You don't do what yeah. the big boys do. Are yeah. you kidding? The big boys run Super Bowl ads. The big boys spend millions of dollars hiring all these consultants. They have lots of agencies. They, the big boys run like national campaigns. I don't think any of the, any of that big boy stuff, it matters to us. We need to do stuff in our town with our customers, with our people, the local high school, our favorite restaurant we like to eat at. Here's the church we go to. Here's stuff in and around the community. All I'm doing is showing my connections with other people in the community. What a surprise. Yeah. With um, my cell phone. Am I a professional videographer? No. Taught thousands of small businesses how to do this with no money. Hmm. Well, I love the approach. And um, I think it's it's really refreshing just to, to have like a frank, honest conversation about it. Uh, I want to talk about... AI, you mentioned it a couple of times. I know you're, you just gave yeah. the keynote speech, uh, you know, the closing keynote, and you're headed to Vegas uh, to do a, another one. Um, and it's all about AI in, and SEO, if I understand correctly. Yep. Um, yep. I, I mean, AI has changed the game for us in so many ways. We use it uh, in, a, in a lot of different arenas, sometimes with content yep. creation, but a lot of times for ideation. I used it to help me design a website. I built a, uh, you know, sure. built a web, and I have no technical background. Like there yeah. is so much that AI can do, and I know that it's changing the game for SEO. It has to be. It's changing the game for everything. How yeah. so? And and what's your take? Every day, people hit me up and they show me some new AI tool, and it builds websites, it writes articles. Someone showed me one yesterday that was a deep fake of me and it was really close you know i mean i played it to the audience and said do you think this is actually me or not and i think half the people i, I asked the question in such a way people already were, like if i didn't say anything people might people would probably have thought that that was me but it wasn't me at all somebody used one of the i forgot which ai tool. there's lots of tools okay that i think is scratching the tip of the ice that that's so much fluff and there's nothing wrong with having the ai help you create content but because people are calling it generative AI, because it's based on LLM, large language models, they think that the AI is there just to help you write articles and build websites and basically make you lazy. If you're using the AI because you're lazy and it doesn't include the real signal of real videos and pictures of the thing that you say that you do, you will get smacked down by Google. And millions of businesses already got smacked down last month, as you probably saw. 
all this cute little boasting about how they used the AI tool generated a million pages of the website, drove all this revenue and whatever it is, and then they got hammered and went to zero. And not one business in the last month that got hammered got their re-inclusion request accepted. What does that tell you? Not one business got their site back when they got hammered by Google. Never seen that in history before. What does that tell us? It means that there's abuse of AI because of the shiny object syndrome going on. Let me show you where AI has been this whole time and where it's going. So this is an iPhone. And I take pictures and videos everywhere I go. And, you know, it doesn't have to be an iPhone. It could be an Android. And I have Google Photos, okay? I click on Google Photos. And you can see I was in Washington, D.C. yesterday. Here I am speaking on stage. And... Yeah. Here's, here's all this stuff that's going on, you know? I'm, I was in Denver speaking. There's some famous people I'm with. I'm in Miami a couple days ago with my buddy Nielsen Silva. So to click on that, you can see that's me and Nielsen. If I click on the thing to get information about it, you can see that this is me and Nielsen. And you can see the dates. You can see where it was. Right. You see that? So oh, yeah, right. Andrew, name... Name any city in the world. Kuala Lumpur. That's where I'm Kuala at right Lumpur. now. So. <laughs> oh, I love KL. So Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur. Okay. So the AI has got all these photos and videos in Kuala Lumpur. And there's a lot of ones with me and the queen. And we're hanging out and eating and singing and all kinds of crazy stories in Kuala Lumpur. Here I was at a black really? tie event. Nice. Yeah. And it was honoring the queen. She had this miraculous recovery, which I can tell you about another day. And there's information about that. You can click on that. Oh. And you can see, why is that not? Here we go. You can see here I am in KL. This is exactly where it occurred. I can zoom in on the map a little bit if I can pinch on this and see, right? Yeah. And... You can see like who it's with and what's going on. The AI is doing this. The AI knows. I know it's kind of a scary thought to think like the AI has this, but whether it's Google or Amazon or Facebook or Netflix or Spotify, they all, it knows. Okay. So name like an activity or name a thing, anything. Hiking. Hiking. I love hiking. So hiking. Okay. Now, do you think when I'm taking pictures and videos and whatnot, that the AI or the, that, that I'm having to like label that I'm doing hiking or does the AI just know that I'm out there hiking? Yeah. At this point, it just Clearly knows. I'm, yeah. I'm not tagging me. So obviously I'm doing some hiking. So I'm hiking in, in South America, deep in the jungle where there's dangerous sorts of things. Right. And you could, uh, thank goodness we have this guide here who's protecting us from these, you know, they have these boa constrictor sorts of things in the jungle that will just drop down out of the trees and squeeze you to death or whatnot. I mean, just crazy sorts of things. And here I'm hiking, this is what, Arches National Park somewhere? Where is this? Somewhere in Utah, right? This is clearly hiking, right? So I would argue the AI has already been here this whole time. And whose AI am I using to categorize what I'm doing, where I am? Like it could be plumbing or roofing or landscaping. Whose AI am I using? I'm using Google's AI. Why am I using Google's you, AI? Because that's what that's what that's what they're trained on. They're trained on all of the hmm. information that Google has, basically. Huh. So would it make sense that if I want to rank better in Google? In Google Maps, if I want my ads to perform better, if I want my website to perform better, if I want to do better on YouTube, would it make sense that I would just open up myself to Google? Like, here, here's my technicians, here's where I am, here's what I'm doing. Of course, I can decide how much I want to show of my life, but do, do you think that might that might help my SEO a little bit? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's what we do, and it works. And people are so yeah. surprised, they'll say, oh, yeah. You know, before I had no phone calls, and now with, with Dennis, I, I, there's this guy, Chris Powers, and he's in, oh, what city in Florida? I forgot. But anyway, his phone is ringing, and he's got an HVAC company, and before, nothing happened, and he paid thousands of dollars to have these marketing companies do all kinds of stuff, and now his phone is ringing, and he's ranking in maps, and he thinks that 
that the ages, I train a lot of young adults who run these different agencies. So he thinks that my friend Parker is doing a great job. And he is. Parker's working really hard. He's got a team of VAs and all that kind of stuff. But is it because of us? Or is it because we made Chris Powers more Googleable by mm-hmm. making it so that Google could see that this guy does a good job fixing air conditioning units when it gets really hot outside and his air conditioner breaks? I don't know anything about air conditioners, but he does. And his teams that he sends out when it's hot to go fix grandma's air conditioner, all they did was they captured it. And then the VAs, you can hire your own VA. You can hire a VA from Andrew. I don't care. But someone else has got to do it. If you don't push it off to someone else to do it, it's not going to get done. Your people have to collect it. Then someone else has to process it, post it to all the different channels, and then run ads dollar a day against it. And then the winners put more money. Then you get more HVAC, you get more whatever. The more you talk about, the more you're going to get, right? The, the more kinds that you keep talking about HVAC, you'll get more HVAC. I had one company, Pure Plumbing. Every one of these is, by, is, by, is run by an agency that I coach, but there's this company, Pure Plumbing in Las Vegas. And they are known mainly for plumbing and they talk about plumbing. And the owner was kind of complaining to me about how they weren't getting HVAC leads. And I said, it's because you don't talk about HVAC. You don't have a lot of signal for Google to pick up that you're doing HVAC. They said, oh, but we want you guys to do this and this and this, you know, why aren't you driving more HVAC leads? And I said, because we got to show that we do HVAC and then we have, you know, then we can work with that and do all the things we need to do. But you see, you see how it's a two part thing. Like that service business has to collect all that stuff and put it, they need to do a good job and put it all to a folder. Then whoever you use an in-house person, an agency, someone else, a freelancer on Upwork, whatever it is, then they can process that. But you as a business owner need to put that all in one bucket. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the the well, thing you I, want, give me need more of, right? You want more of that thing? Then give me a bucket of more of those things. Right, right. You doing those things, just like I showed you here on my phone. Uh, first off, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know that I had fully clicked that everything is getting captured in that way. Even though like Apple serves me up, it's like memories from the beach, you know, and it's, it, it puts this little montage together of all the times you went to the beach or in the last five years or whatever. It's like, well, mm-hmm. obviously it knows that it already has the facial recognition. You can search by person. You can do all these certain things. So, of course um, it knows. Yeah, it, it makes it makes total sense. Um, you ever have lunch with a friend and you're talking about a product and all of a sudden you see an ad for that product even though you've never talked about my it My wife just mentioned that today. She's like, yeah, I mentioned Escalades and now I'm getting a bunch of ad- ads for Escalades today. So, so it's um, purely a coincidence, isn't it, Andrew? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. It, on the AI topic, if if I'm having my AI, whatever it is, like Claude, ChatGPT, whatever, it's sure. creating content for me for a blog article, let's say, for my website. Yeah. But it's just referencing right. all the all the information that's on the internet. Isn't it kind of just going to spit out pretty generic stuff? Generic garbage. Yeah. yeah, that's just spamming. The, that's astroturfing the internet with garbage. And Google calls that if you do too much of that, just have that's the that's the exact thing not to do with AI tools. That's how you're gonna get busted. Google mm-hmm. calls this scaled content abuse. You ever heard of scaled content abuse? And no. what that is? Scaled content abuse is usually done by people who are well meaning and they'll say, you know what? I'll have I'm a whatever. Uh, like, you know, uh, mental health or home staging that's one of the ones you mentioned right i'm a home staging company in what city just name a city whatever city it is tampa florida tampa tampa home staging and i'm gonna have the ai write articles in fact i'll do this i'm gonna say hey siri open chat gpt the name of the company is staged right staged right so we'll we'll see if uh uh, yeah yeah so I have a friend who runs a home staging company called Staged Right in Tampa, Florida. Can you generate 10 article topics that they can put on their blog? And the Wi-Fi is a little slow here, but here it is. There it is. I asked a question, and now I'm asking it to answer. And the, this is, what I'm doing right now is what you should not do. I'm demonstrating what most people do. I'm showing what not to do. So don't say, oh, well, Dennis did this. He's saying do this. I do not do this. I'm demonstrating why this is wrong. Okay? And look, 
these are some pretty good topics, aren't they? Right? Hmm. Top 10 home staging tips to sell your house faster. That's a good topic. The benefits of home staging. Why is it worth the investment? Before and after. Home staging transformations that sold homes. These are great topics, aren't they? Right? And then I could say, you know, I really like number three. Can you go ahead and write a blog post on this? I mean, this this seems like a normal thing to do, right? That doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with the, this technique does there. See, I like number three. Just go ahead and generate an article. Here it is. Boom, 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 boom. And then you copy and paste this thing into your website. And then all of a sudden, you've generated like 20 of these. And you did almost nothing. It took you like five minutes. Sounds good, right? Why is that completely wrong? Why is that the, just going to get you banned eventually? Well, first, first off, I, yeah, for me, it's it's that it's re- it's not referencing anything about stage fright uh, about Tampa. It's not necessarily showing that local stuff, and then it's referencing it, it's almost like self self referential is almost what's coming up for me. It's just looking at itself and then spitting it back out. So it's obviously going to be generic. Um, no, but it's it, I mean it's 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 a good article. I mean it's talking about you know it's mentioning stage fright and all that stuff. It, it looks yeah. like a good article. It's actually interesting, but it's wrong because what we've done is create content that was pulled out of thin air, right? Mm-hmm. When, because it's not, you know, at stage right in Tampa, Florida, we've seen firsthand how effective staging can trend, like blah, 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 blah. Like it's doing the best that it can. But remember, it is not showing anything that's real. So if I come to my Google Photos and mm-hmm. I do a search for, Tampa. And here's all the photos and here's Tampa. You can see Mm -hmm. I'm in the Tampa, right? There's lots of proof of me in Tampa, all over Tampa, right? And then I show, if if I take the article as it is and just paste on the internet and be lazy, no. But if I show real work from my people, not stock art, but pictures of before and after, and now it looks, and now I sold the home for more, so the staging cost me $2,000, but I sold the home for $50,000 more than I would have. And then I show real experience of me doing the thing that I say that I do in the city that I do. And I'll say it's in this part of Tampa. This is where that new downtown area is, the park with the fancy hotel that all the rich people go to. And it's, you know, it's only two miles from the airport. Or, you know, what? Like I'm showing that I actually am, it's real experience for me. I'm showing the signal of this. Now, if I use that, if I start from that, and I have the AI help process the real, raw, initial ingredients. That's the correct use of AI. If I make it up from nothing out of thin air, that's how you get in trouble. You have to mm-hmm. start with the raw ingredients. Then the AI can act like a VA. That, I think of AIs, I think of it as like having five or six different VAs and each one does a different thing. Mm-hmm. But that's the best way. And I know a lot of people who use AI and build AI tools, and they also think the same way. They view every one of these AIs as a VA. I have to tell the VA exactly what to do. They're very intelligent. They know everything. That's what the AI does. But I have to feed it my experiences. I have to feed it all of the stuff in here and tell it, give it instruction on what to do, and it can do a good job. It's a VA as part of a process. It's not just just generate all this like stuff out of nothing. That's, that's going to get you busted because everyone can do that. Right. And everyone has been, or a lot of people have been doing it and they have been getting busted lately. Right. I didn't know there was a term for it, scaled content abuse. So I'll yeah. take that one away from this, but that's, that's amazing. Uh, that's right. learning. Um, and yeah, what, what we train our VAs to do is we call them AI, AI powered virtual assistants. We try to train them on the latest uh, AI so that they're always up to date on these things. It's, it's pretty cool, uh, methodology for us. So, I mean, we, we were talking before the show. We're like, hey, we could probably spend an hour on each one of these topics. And I feel like we've just scratched the surface in so many ways, Dennis, but also served the, served the audience really well. Uh, this has been amazing. Uh, towards the end of our show, we always ask our guests three specific questions. Uh, I'm curious to hear your answers. The first question is, what do you think the world needs most right now? It needs more empathy. It needs people who care and are willing to relate, even if they have a different point of view. I think we're in a love drought. There's so much anger. People are just mad about whatever. They're just mad about. They just want to be mad. And I think if this causes loneliness and depression, which 
started with COVID. I'm not one of these political people. I'm not on one side or the other. I think they're all crazy, mm-hmm. right? But I think when there's this nonsense that's occurring in the world at an increasing rate, it's harder to find people who are willing to laugh a little bit, willing to listen to other people's points of view. Last month I was in Israel and I looked at all these. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm doing a podcast right now. Yeah. Yeah. This guy's, this guy wants to join us. Yeah. He says he wants, he says he wants to know my name. I don't know his name. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's really interesting. Yeah. Thank you. But you know, we're not, yeah, we're, we're here. So, hey guys. So but maybe afterwards. You're we, live. We talk, <laughs> yeah. 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 I appreciate you. Know. Yeah, so Hit me up and we can so, talk later. So the one thing that I've been interested is. But we have an, we have an audience here. I don't, they can't oh. hear you because they, it's through yeah, my sorry. headphones. I've heard you used to drive for dollars. That's what we're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you that it's not, it, you, you're not. Oh, sorry, on, sorry. on you can't they can't they can't hear you yeah my, my name is dennis you here pull out your phone pull out your phone and google my <laughs> this name this is this is, this is, this is we're gonna, we're gonna google here. Dennis is, all right yeah. here so this what's your name nikhil nikhil so this is nikhil's phone okay and we're gonna mm-hmm. google me so we're gonna go to google okay and we're gonna type in my name and when you search my name here, look here, Nikhil. Yes. You can see here, this is a knowledge panel. There's all these pictures and videos of me. And you see these colored boxes? Hmm. Kind of hard to see. These colored boxes, it shows my age and it shows like what hmm. I've done and it shows, you know, I have a million followers on social media, all this kind of stuff, right? Here's these different posts. I was just about talking about how I was in Israel and I met with some friends who were Palestinians and some Jewish friends and Muslim friends and all that. But all mm-hmm. this information's here. And people are asking, who's the CEO of Blitzmetrics? Well, it's me. And here's a book. And people are also looking at, these are other people that are the top in digital marketing. Mari Smith, Neil Patel, Larry Kim, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're Googleable, people want to know, Dennis Yu net worth, Dennis Yu Yahoo, because, you know, Dennis Yu dollar a day strategy, which is what Nikhil is asking about, right? But the thing is, you want to be Googleable. If you're Googleable and you use the AI the right way, when people search your name, they're going to see these colored boxes, you see what I'm saying, Andrew? These colored boxes. You don't have to be a celebrity. So all the information is right here. You're getting a mentorship with a different person. Yeah, fantastic. And I really love to get... Uh, so re- reach out to me. So yeah. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you, Nikhil. <laughs> yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. All righty. Thanks, Nikhil. So Thanks for, uh, you know... There you go. Yeah. That's, that's a first here on the Better Than Rich show, but I love it. That, that was awesome. Yeah. I don't, I don't think he understands the idea. Like, I... It's just like, you know, when your parents, they see you working on the laptop, they don't think you're actually doing anything. They don't think you're like actually doing real work or there's real people there, but you know, right. they yeah. don't know, right? How do you get paid to <laughs> sit, at, yeah, sit at your yeah. computer? Well, maybe you will eventually, right? He'll, he'll follow you on social. Um, yeah. <laughs> so where were we? We were talking about um, what the world needs most. You said empathy. I the, love the that. World needs, the, yeah. the world needs to have a little more empathy, a little more understanding. Every, if everyone could see the burdens that other people were carrying and because i most people are just trying are just they're barely getting by but they're putting mm-hmm. up they're just doing everything they can to make it through right just putting up a good face to try to not fall apart right yeah i recognize that life is you know everyone makes it seem like life is easy it's not easy mm-hmm. you know what percent of americans are living paycheck to paycheck what 78 percent I know you're in KL where it's cheap, right? In Malaysia, you can live like a king for nothing. But in America, it's 78% paycheck to paycheck. It's Life is tough. Yeah. So we have to have a little empathy for that. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate that answer. I, I totally agree. Um, the second question we ask people, Dennis, is what, what one to three books uh, do you recommend everyone read? And I know that's a, you know, a tall order to just pick one, or, one to three, but what would you say? I say number one, read Principles by Ray Dalio. Why? Because it helps you think in a, in a way to solve problems to get around your blind spots. All of us, we have these blind spots, which are things that by definition we don't, we don't understand that causes us to make the same mistake over and over again. 
And so if you find yourself falling into a certain pattern where like you have the same bad girlfriend every time, or you have the same issue with clients, you have the same issue with money, or you have the same issue because of whatever, it's because of there's some blind spot that's causing this thing to happen to you each time. And principles by Ray Dalio is a way to overcome that in a very logical sort of way, which means you, it's, it's not like a self-help thing. It's just, it, it's a way to solve problems in life. And the second one I'll give you is Life Force by Tony Robbins. I wouldn't have think Tony Robbins would be the guy who wrote the book. In fact, he didn't. He was just, he just put his name on it. And he had all these top doctors, right? And it's about living longer through advances in modern health and genetics and stem cells and peptides and all these crazy things that have happened in the last few years where AI is now creating personalized medicine for each of us based on our actual, pers- our individual DNA. And I've seen friends of mine who had critical injuries that would have required surgery, get stem cells, and they're walking and playing tennis and playing golf and all that stuff just like new. And, uh, you know, I'm 50 and I have more energy than most 20 year olds. I did an Ironman last weekend, right? So with the advances in health and what's possible, you don't have to get old anymore. So Life Force by Tony Robbins is a good starting point to get you to all these places. So I would just give you those two principles in Life Force. Thank you. Those, those are great. Thank you so much. So our final, our final question is, what does it mean to you uh, to be better than rich? Money is just something that allows you to have freedom as you've heard from people who have a lot of money or people that are old. And when you ask people on their deathbed, I've asked a lot of my super wealthy friends, they always regret not making the most of key relationships and chasing the dollar. And I believe that it's not the money in the bank account, which, which enables you to do things, which is, I mean, I'm not saying you don't need money, you need somebody, but the freedom to do what you want, the freedom to be where you want, the freedom of health, the freedom of not having pain or anxiety. I think that, it's, it's all like whatever you need to do to have the freedom so that when you want to, like I wanted to go to Paris two weeks ago and go to the Louvre and see Nike, the Greek wing goddess of victory. And I did because I could just do it. And in a few minutes, I'm about to fly to Las Vegas to meet a friend of mine who's a pilot and we're going to go hang out because I can. That's freedom. Isn't that, that's, that's better than rich. Yeah. I love it. Well, I can I can uh, boldly say that this is one of my favorite interviews so far, Dennis. This has been amazing. Uh, so so much information, but also just so genuine and uh, and generous. Uh, and I love the fact that we had uh, somebody drop into the podcast, which is uh, a first yeah. here on the show. Uh, and, and I love how you handle it, <laughs> how you roll with it. I love I love your attitude, man. Yeah. Hey, I'm sure yeah. that people are going to want to follow up with you. What, what should they do? Just sure. Google you or what? They should Google me and whatever their favorite channel is. I, it's not an AI. It's not a VA. I actually respond. It might take me a day or two, but I yeah. always respond. And very rarely do people actually ask questions. And of the ones who do ask like meaningful, thoughtful questions, don't ask a question like, how do I make my first million dollars? That's a ridiculous question. Ask a specific question based on some on something that we've talked about. Like Andrew and I, you know, you and I, we've had this long conversation and maybe someone does some research. And based on that, they, to, to show that they've earned this trust to ask a particular question about something we've talked about, I'm happy to answer those questions, right? Reach out, right? Obviously, we have lots of free content out there, but we also take on people that are very successful as home service businesses, for example. We also grow a number of agencies for young adults. We hire a ton of VAs. We help a lot of agencies like you who have a lot of VAs, right? They want to train their VAs or get more clients, right? We provide all that stuff out there. We, we offer free and paid offerings. If you don't have any money, just go to the free stuff, right? Awesome. Dennis, thank you again. We really appreciate your time. I hope you have a great flight and uh, crush your keynote uh, coming up here as well. Uh, audience, thank you so much. I hope you really enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure you leave a comment, leave a review as well. That always goes a long way with us. And remember, until next time, to leave today better than you found it. We'll see you then. Thanks, everyone. 
Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the show, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from us, you can follow us on Instagram at better than underscore rich and join our Facebook group at the better than rich show. Thanks again for listening. We look forward to seeing you next time. And remember, leave today better than you found it.